If you're like me and you live in a city, there's a good chance that the night sky probably looks a lot like this. More than 80% of the world's population lives under sky glow, light pollution that obscures our view of the stars. You can see the true scale of light pollution on this map. But when we move out from urban spaces, light pollution decreases significantly in many parts of the world. Some regions have so little light pollution that they've been officially designated as dark sky sanctuaries. And one of the biggest dark sky sanctuaries on the planet is right here in Minnesota. Right now, I'm on my way to Northeast Minnesota, home to the second largest international dark sky sanctuary on the planet, the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. The Boundary Waters is a vast protected wilderness area in Northeast Minnesota, and it's part of the Superior National Forest. It spans nearly 1.1 million acres, features over 1,100 lakes, and more than 1,200 miles of canoe routes. In 2020, the Boundary Waters was declared an International Dark Sky Sanctuary by Dark Sky International, an organization dedicated to restoring the nighttime environment and reducing light pollution. I'm going to meet up with a local astronomer to learn more about what makes the Boundary Waters one of the best places on Earth to stargaze and even see the Northern Lights. An interest in astronomy has been with me ever since I was 11 years old. That's as far back as I can recall. The beauty of the night sky kind of captured my imagination. And so I was just curious and it made me want to know what was up there and what those things were. This is Bob King. But I'm probably better known as Astro Bob. He's an amateur astronomer and a former photographer for the Duluth Tribune, where he now works as a freelance writer covering astronomy. The sky in Minnesota is relatively accessible. In many areas of the state, you don't have to drive too far to find a dark sky. We actually still have pristine darkness in northern Minnesota. If I want a truly dark sky, I can drive 10 or 20 miles north of Duluth, where the Milky Way is just absolutely spectacular. What our region offers in terms of unique things that you can see in the night sky two come to mind right away. We in Minnesota can see the northern lights with a fair amount of frequency compared to someone who lives in Texas or Arizona. The other thing we have is also a northern phenomenon. It's called noctilucent clouds. And these are clouds that are made of meteor dust and they glow silvery blue during twilight, during the summer. What makes the Boundary Waters so special is that it is truly dark. It is over one million acres of delicious darkness in size. So you get a camping experience in the wilderness and you also get to enjoy the skies the way our ancestors experienced the night sky with a very minimal amount of light pollution. So it's a very special place where people realize we needed to preserve the night sky, the starry skies, not just for ourselves, but for future generations too. The Boundary Waters isn't the only place to experience dark skies in Minnesota. Nearby Voyagers National Park is a designated international dark sky park, offering over 218,000 acres of dark skies. Voyagers National Park was established in 1975. Of that 218,000 acres, more than 40% of it is covered in water. This is Jesse Gates. He's a former park ranger and current dark sky specialist with the Voyagers Conservancy. The Voyagers Conservancy helps the National Park in many ways. Sometimes it's uh, helping to fundraise for the important science tools that are, that are used in the park. Sometimes it's promoting events. In my case, it's doing the education, uh, specifically dark sky education. I went to university in California, and that's where I really got into nature and the outdoors. I found that I really was tied to the night sky. I learned how to use the telescopes. I learned all the constellations and all the cultural stories associated with them. We allow people to experience the darkness up here, which is a really rare phenomenon today. We bring them out under the stars, we bring them out under the Milky Way, and we show them what it would be like to be underneath a truly dark sky. There are lots of water activities you can do here. You can get on a boat, 
a canoe or a kayak. You can go fishing. Uh, you can go swimming in the lake. There's lots of camping and backpacking opportunities, and there are boat tours. Dark Sky Places draw visitors from around the world, and Dark Sky Tourism is on the rise. Everyone from amateur stargazers to professional astrophotographers travel hundreds, sometimes thousands of miles to see a clear view of the night sky in these places. Here in, in, in Minnesota, we see a growing interest in dark sky tourism and astro tourism, and that's something that, that we're seeing nationwide as well. This is Todd Burlett, and he's the president of Starry Skies North, the Minnesota chapter of Dark Sky International. We're here at the Minnesota Astronomical Society's Eagle Lake Observatory, which is located in Norwood, Young America, just southwest of, of the metro area. But it's far enough away from the urban core that the light dome isn't too bad. And so they've got great opportunities to come out, use these telescopes during public observing nights. They've got a classroom if it's cloudy or, or rainy. They do an annual event out here where people can come out, camp, bring their telescopes, bring their eyeballs, and just have a great fun family event. I've been doing this for about 20 years, got involved in Starry Skies North uh, formally about five years ago. We work throughout the state to raise awareness of the importance of natural night skies. Dark Sky International has several different categories of dark sky places. The one that is reserved for the deepest, darkest, most remote parts of, of the planet that are, are still naturally dark are called dark sky sanctuaries. And we have one right here in Minnesota, the Boundary Waters Canoe Area, until very recently was the world's largest international dark sky sanctuary. We're now second in, in the world and happy to be joined by additional sanctuaries that, that are coming on online. We also have what's called a dark sky park, which is Voyagers National Park up near International Falls. In a world where urban areas continue to expand and light pollution continues to increase, Minnesota has managed to preserve 1.3 million acres of dark skies and experts are taking additional steps to maintain that darkness. Light pollution is slowly but surely working its way further and further away from the cities and brightening up the night sky. You know, every year the sky becomes a little bit brighter. We take special precautions to remain dark. We take actual measurements of darkness and we do that by using this little device right here. It's called a sky quality meter. And so this will give you an actual quantitative number, like a measure of darkness. Additionally, if you notice, all of the lights around us are pointing down to the ground. A uh, big problem with light pollution is that they blast up into the sky. We actually make sure that our lights point down to the ground and we have a lighting management plan that says that we will have 100% of our lights pointed down and are dark sky friendly in a certain period of time. We, like everything else on Earth, developed and evolved under a natural day-night cycle. So that's what our bodies expect. Everything from plants to fish to birds to amphibians, bacteria, algae, even our water quality is impacted by that lack of that natural darkness. Light pollution isn't light per se, it's the inappropriate or excess use of light, the light that is doing more harm than good. Okay, Bob, so you and I are currently standing 15 minutes outside of downtown Duluth on Brighton Beach. Not necessarily a dark sky sanctuary, but dark enough to see some pretty cool things in the night sky. So tell me about what we're gonna look at tonight with your telescope. Well, the first thing we're gonna look at is right behind us, which is the almost full moon. Look at that beautiful, yeah. beautiful globe up there. Take a look. Oh, wow. I think it is very important that we connect to the night sky. What I would tell people coming up from different parts of Minnesota or elsewhere to enjoy the night sky, just soak it in, enjoy what the stars look like. The Boundary Waters and Voyagers National Park are places where you can step outside of your normal routine of life and to reconnect with nature. If these places are not protected, uh, it's open for anything people that are seeing the aurora for the first time, seeing the Milky Way for the first time. The mouths are dropping, tears are coming to their eyes. For me, getting out under, the, under that dark sky, 
I feel like the world slows down a little bit and I can breathe and I can look up at stars. A lot of us grew up curious about things. Looking at the night sky, I'm that kid again. I'm out there exploring. Minnesota still offers enough rural land, country skies, for us to get out there and enjoy them. <laughs>